Welcome to the Conquering Mom Scrap More with Brenda. I'm Brenda and today we're doing the nosegay hand sewing. How to put all the fiddly bits, the outer edge, onto the crown. Now this video is going to be a little bit longer but I mean if you're working on the five or the six inch uh, size of nosegay this is going to be kind of important because it's easier to hand sew all those Y seams around this than it is to actually try and work with them on a sewing machine because the pieces are so small. So this is going to be a fun little adventure we've got today. Now the person I want to talk to you about today is Megan at Tiny Orchard Quilts. Her channel, every time I see her videos, it makes me smile. She's got just a perfect, bubbly, happy personality. She's a long armor. She comes up with her new ideas, and she's a modern quilter. So when you go check her out, tell her Brenda from Conquering Mount Scrapmore sent you. We also have a Facebook group, and when this is airing, I'm not sure if we've decided on the date. If we have, it'll be in the show notes below and with a Zoom link, so you can click on that on that day. And we are also using the rooms within the group to get to, for the group members to get to know each other better. You know, hang out and sew just on an impromptu date. If you're in your sewing room alone and you think, well, gee, it'd be nice to somebody to talk to, you know, you hit on one of the rooms. If you hit on my room, everyone is welcome. So come on in. Let's get to the hand sewing. Okay. Just a real quick review again of these knots. You do a, the first knot is always, I just wind it around lots, you know, just so I get a big knot so you guys can see it. Hopefully you can see it. Ugh, and I've lost my knot. <laughs> it works every time, trust, trust me. Okay, there it is, kind of in a very weird way. Okay, so here is my knot with a great big tail, which we don't need, so I'm cutting it off. There's the knot that we're talking about trying to get. Just, you know, by circling, laying it flat across your needle, giving it a twist, a few twists around, and then pulling it all the way down off the eye, right? You get this cute little knot that works every time to help your, your sewing. And that's basically a quilt, what they call a quilter's knot. Now, I am going to put a little thread conditioner on mine. Now this is thread conditioner I made and we're still playing with the recipe but I like this stuff. This stuff is really nice. I need to run it through like two three times you know maybe four because yeah it has no smell either so okay so I have my pins in place and I have them laid out so that I have a square, a triangle, right, a square, a triangle, a square. So I know how I'm going to sew them. So I give this a good flip over the other direction. And the way I'm sewing mine is I'm always starting with the same, the yellow. I'm always starting on the yellow side. And this, um, this is, takes a bit, a bit of time. So with two pins, now you got to remember when you're hand sewing, you're only hand sewing this what's in front of you right this little area in front of you that's all you're worrying about right you don't worry about the entire quilt you don't worry about anything you're concentrating on just this little bit in front of you and how you're going to make that work right and i think that's why people get overwhelmed well, i'm going to be hand sewing the entire quilt no you're only hand sewing the little bit in front of you and eventually you do get to do the entire quilt, but you only have to worry about what's there. Now, I take my very first stitch and I make sure I've got a quarter inch, which I missed the back entirely. Let's start again. So I go in at a quarter inch on each side, right? And then I go down a quarter inch on each side of the back, right? And we just take a tiny little stitch and we hopefully we get a, bit, a bigger chunk of the back. Can you see that? Yes, okay. And we make our first stitch. This is how you, you start out all hand sewing. Right now you make another stitch almost in the same spot, except this time you're gonna bring the thread from the back of the eye, there's the eye, this is the back thread, and you bring it around the front and under. And that creates your first knot. 
Now, when you do, and then you take two handover knots, or two what I call granny knots. I don't know. You, so you grab it from below, and you twist your hand up, and then you twist it over. And of course, why is it not doing this? <laughs> of course, I got a mess here all of a sudden. Oh, what has it happened? Okay. And yeah, you know, this is part of hand sewing. Everybody just dreads. They know it's going to happen to them soon and they're worried. Okay. So you make a couple of hand over knots. And, and now we're going to start a running stitch, basically a running stitch. Now, if there's a little bit of gap or, you know, it's not lying really flat, Fabric is really forgiving. You can kind of press it flat with your fingers. And this is where everybody forgets. Now, when I teach hand sewing for the first time, I tell people, you know, you take three little stitches while you're breathing in. And one, two, three. Right? Pull as you breathe out slowly. And then you take a half stitch back just in between those stitches and then three more little stitches you know, and work on small first don't work on don't, don't work on that 21 stitches per inch do work on small sm like work on even small will come now I took four so that's okay because I got to my needle so there and now I'm just gonna do another drop down Take my needle out, or my pin out, from the back of the eye, pull it under, and create a knot. Okay, now, what I do is, I again, I do two handover knots, because I've hit a joint. Now, this is what I call a blind seam. Now, what the blind seam does is, you're not working with the blind seam on top, you're working with it from behind. And this thing has just been difficult all of a sudden. So. Huh, okay. So, there it is. And you do another one. Do two. And there. There, another one. Why is that? Ugh, okay. Now, but once you get better at this, you know, like this is only an inch, right? At best, that's an inch, maybe. I doubt if it's an inch. And you can go a little bit further, and this goes along a lot quicker. And you're still thinking about your breathing and your posturing, but you're not making it such a big to-do. Because the breathing and the posture... Think of it like, you know, quilting yoga, right? You're, you're basically calming yourself down so you can hand stitch efficiently, right? So, but yeah, and then you start thinking about other things that you got going on and, you know, you know, this just becomes something to keep your hands from being idle, right? So, and I think our grandmothers and mothers had far better posture than we had because they... You know, they didn't sit and, you know, slump down and all the rest of this stuff. It wasn't proper for them to do that. And I think that's probably why. Now, because I'm at the seam here. There's a seam here between the orange and the yellow. I'm going to take my needle and I'm just going to slip it right through to the orange side. Right? And I don't do anything else but that. And then I cheat. <laughs> of course I cheat. I just break that open just a bit. And all of a sudden, I have a really lovely little gap in there. Then I go back in. Don't touch the orange. Yeah, that's the orange. And I take my first stitch, do a knot, go underneath, right? Go underneath with this, just like this. Go under. And there we go. I get it all off the... There. And I've made my first knot on the orange side. And I do two little handover knots. One, two. There we go. 
and I draw I put my needle in there so I want to make two I want to make this right at the end so I've got a quarter inch on both sides of that needle and quarter inch on both sides there tip it just like that flatten this out nice and neat and there we go so now I can just motor along right because I got my handovers and my our granny knots and I just go in somewhere in that space and I start picking up my little running stitch again until I get to my blind seam because that's where the seam is on that side right I don't see it but I can feel it and I always want to make sure I don't sew the seam from behind so I want to just flip it out of the way right just to move it out of the way and keep it from developing a bunch of bulk you don't sew through your seams when you're hand sewing just like that and make one knot on one side of the blind seam and two hand overs there I get that out of the way and then you flip this out of the way from the back right and you get in there and you make another needle right from the eye of the needle right here the eye of the needle and you pull it under right and two little handover knots Ugh. what have I done I messed it up two one two and I lost my pin because it came out so, there oh. nice yeah fabric is very forgiving especially when it's negotiated in place now if you have not starched your fabric you know it doesn't matter like if you're hand sewing it doesn't matter if you starch it or not um, the only thing if you haven't starched it when you're working on the bias like I am now you have to be very careful not to stretch this becomes a negotiation not you know brute force right like if uh, you have starched it you've got maybe three times you can handle it so that one sewing it together second time sewing the the these pieces on and third time you know sewing it to the cone before the starch gives out and you now start to see you notice a little bit of stretch here and there right so that's all starch does is give you a little bit of advantage without you know having to deal with all the bias issues right so that's something that you know a lot of people don't grasp here now because I'm working the five inch scale I did my the little pieces like this I cut an eighth of an inch larger because <laughs> they're so tiny and I was stabbing myself trying to sew the first one and I thought no I'm not doing this I'm going to cut them just a little bit bigger and this is nice too once you get all this the 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 machine sewing done because then they just they come together very quickly I know this is not quick for you guys I get it but it's quicker than trying to hand sew all of this now you push this out of the way right before you drop your pin so you gotta get it flat and just hold it flat and get your pin in there about a quarter inch down because that gives you an aim something to aim for and then you pick up your needle again and because you're starting a new seam now on the orange the other side of the orange you want to go down and up through the tail and under take the tail and go under and there do your granny knots again I know it sounds like there's a lot of knots on those points but the points are the like where you stop and start that's your weak point so you put a lot more knots in there it's not very often you see the running stitch break just because it's been quilted right but the points and where you stomp and start sometimes that it gets weak so you give it a little extra 
Okay. So. Now you line up. I lined up mine. Okay. You do the same thing again. And this takes about 35 minutes. So if I'm going to keep going here and sewing this and film. And if you guys want to jump to the end, to the ta-da moment, I mean, you certainly can. But I'm just going to keep sewing this along so that you can see how long this actually takes. But you don't have the, you know, the trying to wiggle the, you know, like a, a Y seam underneath. Like you don't have that going on, you know. So that's part of it too. I think that people, you know, people forget... Anyways, they all come together very much the same. And it's just a matter of sitting down. I watch TV or Netflix. Netflix, I guess, is the... With my husband at night. And we, I sit and I make, you know, a couple of crowns. Sometimes I'll be stitching on crowns onto a cone. And, you know, it's sometimes I'm just, you know, finishing up the, the Y seam here. Or, you know, it's not a... It's not a big... Oh gosh, I gotta get it done. No, I don't. No, I don't. I know you guys are all sitting there thinking, wow, you're so far ahead. No, I'm not. I have got 36 blocks to make, and right now I'm, you know, I'm taking my time. I am enjoying the process very much. You see that I ripped, I, I just ripped it down about an eighth of an inch. Just makes it easier to turn. That's all I did. So now I'll lay it out nice nice and flat. There we go. So yeah, this takes about 35 minutes or so. 30 minutes, I think. I hate to have you guys watch this the whole time, but you know, like I say, if you want to jump to the end. If you just want to listen to me talk and babble while we're sewing, that's okay too. <laughs> but, yeah, I find this process very meditative. And my husband sometimes, and I don't agree on our, on stuff, but I find myself um, wishing people well and praying for them, you know, hoping that they, you know, get over their illness or you know, their family issue or, you know, things sometimes, hopefully there will be a resolution soon for their troubles or, I, you know, I find myself doing that. And I don't know if it's because of my age or if it's because that's the way I am. I haven't quite figured that all out, but I, um, I do, I do find that it's helps me keep, keep me in a, if I do hand sewing or hand quilting at night, I sleep better at night, and I also find that I'm more centered, and I find myself more balanced because I'm not just thinking about me, I'm thinking about others, right? Because this takes me into a different place, and what I can do for others, you know, like what kind of fun things there are I can do, you know, like make someone a quilt or make somebody's mom a quilt because their mom's sick or, you know, not doing well or needs a... A lap blanket to have for chemo or you know have their dad have a little bright little log cabin blanket because he's you know sitting in a hospital waiting for heart surgery or something I I just find it puts me in a different mind it puts me in a different space with my head you know and I prefer it I prefer being in that space because sometimes you get really down and depressed and everything. And I just find this, this is like, this is really therapeutic, you know, for me. So I enjoy this. And yeah, I like making quilt tops too. So there we are so far, right? Now I grab the next one. And I keep these kind of like this, just pinned together. So I know what order they come in, right? So I don't have to, okay, who's next? You know, I made those decisions already. So it becomes kind of, you know, just sew it together. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to do anything now. You just have to sew it. 
It comes very easy. And line it up, take some time, line it up quickly. And yeah. Oh, or <laughs> my husband the other day, he was cleaning out our Roomba, which I call the cat exerciser because the cat just takes off and, and doesn't like the Roomba much. But anyway, so the, the Roomba was acting up and having issues every once in a while. It would just spin on a wheel and, you know, we couldn't figure out what was wrong with the path or whatever. Well, between my long red hair, his hair... <laughs> And the cat hair and the thread oh my gosh you can always tell what color I'm sewing with by the thread that the vacuum cleaner picks up there's, there's thread everywhere in this house that looks pretty good and we'll just roll along here yeah so it looks uh, but yeah this thing is starting not to be able to wheel it would go along a straight line and all of a sudden start to spin because one wheel was moving and the others weren't. And it was like, oh no, <laughs> that's not good. That's not good with a Roomba. So, but yeah, so he, he took a little scissor and he pulled all the stuff out and the stuff that wouldn't come out by pulling, he clipped it out. And now the Roomba works really good, but it wasn't working good before. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. I just find my nosegay is really nice. And it's really pretty. I'm, uh, oh, I'm making a legacy. This is, uh, you know, a legacy quilt is one that takes a nod to something your mother or grandmother or great-grandmother made. You know, it's like the, the legacy quilts, like, our common ones are like Dear Jane, right? Like the Dear Jane quilts that everybody, you know, oohs and awes over. Well, they're making a legacy quilt for themselves because of Jane's stickle, right? And her beautiful quilt. And I mean, it's it's just gorgeous. Doesn't matter what colors it's done in. It's absolutely stunning. But so this is a legacy quilt for me because my grandmother made this quilt at a five inch scale. That's why I'm doing a crazy five inch scale. And <laughs> it's, uh, she made it when she was 16. Probably most of the sewing was done by kerosene or, or lamp, you know, like kerosene lamp or candle. And her scraps are very much these tiny little scraps. Now I'm at the seam. Again, I'll go through, just whip through. Okay, now we align this just a bit. Just break that seam just a tad, makes it easier. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so she made it when, she, I understand that she made it when she was 16. It is just stunning, just stunning. This five inch, you know, this little five inch blocks. And then she Hand, hand quilted it and it was queen size. I don't know if mine's going to be queen size or or not. And we're not sure how I'm going to teach the borders because or borders or sashing. I might just have to explain it and let you guys play with what you want to do. Well, but I'll give you some ideas, fun ideas for the sashing and the, the borders. Okay. Because this is a Mine's turning into a cute little scrap buster. Oh, where did that go? Here we go. Let's go. <sighs> yeah. Oh. oh, here's a here's a trick. If you find yourself as you're hand sewing, your uh, thread is all of a sudden starting to you know, not and kind of twist about and, you know, not behave nicely and not glide smoothly. You know, just mine's still doing a really good job because I'm using Aurifil, but just put more thread conditioner on and I'll show you how to do that. If you're in the middle of something, you know, and all of a sudden you start having issues with it, it's because you haven't got enough thread conditioner. What you do is you open your thing, right? And you just run your your thread across it as far as it will go, 
and you'll pick up enough thread conditioner to get done the rest of your project. And a lot of people th think, well, I put thread conditioner on it. Well, yeah, but you're dragging, especially if you do really tiny little stitches, your thread is dragging through your work every time, right? So you're losing some of that thread conditioner every time you pull through, right? So that's something to consider and just keep in mind, you know, why is your your hand sewing. A lot of people forget that you know, it only lasts so long on the thread conditioner. The thread conditioner I make, I haven't decided. We're still playing with the formula and when I get one formulated that I really really like I will talk to my friend about releasing it for you guys because I think that would be something you could all enjoy and uh, go on a little journey of making your own thread conditioner if you do, if you like doing hand sewing. If all you're doing, all the hand sewing you're doing is um, basically sewing on bindings, you know, like when you get the binding sewn on the front and then you're hand sewing it to the back or putting on sleeves, you know, it's nice to have a good good thread conditioner as well. Okay, let's get the last triangle on. Now, the other thing. I always look. I always pop this open and look. Okay, this is where I need to be. <laughs> because I have sewn these on wrong. Ask me what a pain in the neck it is to undo all my knots. You know. And it's okay that you do that. I mean, that's fine. I mean, everybody does it at some point. But, yeah, it's like... You hope you don't do it too often, but I have done it, and it's not fun. There we go. Okay, now I'm back at a point, so I go down, and up. See, you only have to make that quilter's knot at the very beginning, right? Because the rest of it, you just go. The If you've watched the, the machine sewing one, you know, I stop. Right? And I realign and I stop and I realign, right? I do two, like I'll, I'll only do like one V and then I stop and I'll do another V and I'll stop. Well, that, this is where hand sewing, you know, you just, you just do one long, one long stitching session and your edge is all done, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. There. And now I'll make my knot for my blind seam. There we go. There. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, this is that already at 27 minutes. Ah! Okay. Well, like I say, if you didn't watch all of this, you know, it's okay. I understand. It's a long one. But you need to know how long they are to make, so. I've got one more piece to go after I finish this one in my hand. And then we get to our ta -da moment. There we go. Hopefully you get to see some of this and it, you know, gets more focused. We're getting the right shots so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. And there we go. Another knot. And through there. and just break it just a bit just a bit so it 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 will turn nicely you know it'll flip over you don't even have to break it into about an, an eighth of an inch and it turns nice so mm. 
actually I'm looking forward to working on this you know just me and my sewing and my hand sewing I'm looking very forward to this I'm getting more and more of these blocks done you know up to a point I um uh, when I when I'm sewing my blocks I take a bag because all my pieces are in a bag and then I do all of the sewing that I can as much machine sewing as I can in the bag and then put it to the side so my so now all I have to do is once they're out on the love seat I only have to do the hand sewing and that's coming up really that's coming along it's not fast it's not a fast process but it's fun it's enjoyable and I've got a big this thing is all the way around there we go but it's nice get seeing how you know you get a couple of blocks done and then a couple more and a couple more this these quilts the ones I'm hand quilting and hand sewing are for my grandkids so here's our little ta-da moments. Aren't these adorable? Now our video at what 39 minutes or 29 minutes or something said, okay, you've talked enough. <laughs> and it just it shut off. And I didn't realize it, so I just kept on sewing. But hopefully it gave you enough ideas to what we were doing here with these little pieces. And to get all your edge pieces done, this is how you would assemble like any other piece. You'd take your smallest unit, assemble it onto your next size, right? So this is how you take all these subunits and you put them with another subunit, right? So now next week we're going to show you how to do the hand sewing of the cone part of this block right here. So you're going to be able to see how this all comes together because this is all one piece already now, right? So, um, yeah, yeah, the camera decided I talked too long. <laughs> it cut us off. So I hope you have a fabulous week ahead. And I hope everything goes right for you. Okay, you guys take care. All right, bye. My husband and I would love to thank you for coming along with us on our little fun adventure here that we're having. We do have a Facebook group now. And that Facebook group is got some very very talented quilters in there and we love sharing and, and you know posting pictures and commenting and it's it's been a lot of fun and the advantage of the Facebook group is sometimes I drop patterns in there early so you kind of get a hint as to what is coming next after the nosegay sew along we're going to be doing curves boot camp right away so we'll get to sewing those curves and it'll be fun it'll be a lot of it'll be a lot of interesting little blocks that we've got to work on but we would like you to share, like, and subscribe. Telling your friends about us and, and letting them know that you kind of like our channel, that, that means so much to us here. So you take care. You have a fabulous week ahead. Okay, bye.